Uh, my name is Samuel Giroux, PhD student at Purdue University. Um, I'm talking about my work, can't seem to get the slide to go backwards, but anyway, I'm talking about my work on uh, automatic attack discovery in TCP congestion control using a model guided approach. Uh, this is joint work with Ndondal Hoke from Florida International University um, and um, Alan Mislov, David Chofneys, and my advisor, Christina Nadirataru from Northeastern University. Uh, so we're going to be talking about, to start, a, a day in the life of the internet. So assuming when you finish up uh, this conference today, you'll probably go back to your hotel room, pull up your laptop computer, connect to the Wi-Fi, um, and possibly begin catching up on your favorite Netflix show. Uh, when you do that then, um, that data is going to be streamed to your computer over a TCP connection. And actually, as of recently, that TCP connection will have been encrypted uh, with TLS to help pr protect it from spying eyes that might be out in the network. However, if there's an attacker in the network, this attacker can actually inject packets into the network that would cause TCP to believe that the network is very congested and slow with that stream of data down to a tiny trickle, which of course results in very poor quality video um, and possibly even the dreaded uh, buffering spinner of doom. This of course leads to very dissatisfied users and if it happens often enough, um, leads to Netflix being dissatisfied as well. <laughs> This is just one scenario um, of a TCP congestion control attack, which is what we're going to be talking about um, in the rest remainder of this presentation. But before we do that, we're going to take a step back and think about TCP, uh, which is the transport protocol used by the vast majority of internet traffic, including web, email, instant messaging, file transfer, um, as well as traffic encrypted with TLS, like HTTPS secure web sessions, and many of the network infrastructure protocols like BGP that keep our internet functioning correctly. Uh, because of its ubiquity, there are literally thousands of implementations of TCP, with the network scanner MMAP able to detect some 5,000 different variations. Now, TCP provides to applications a number of guarantees like reliability, in-order delivery, flow control, and congestion control. We're going to focus on that last one in this work. So what is TCP congestion control? Well, its goal is to protect against congestion collapse, which is a situation that occurs where the majority of data that's sent in a network um, is eventually dropped. Um, and this actually occurred on the internet, early internet, in uh, 1988, prior to the introduction of TCP congestion control, resulting in a throughput drop of a factor of 1,000. Uh, congestion control also helps to ensure fairness between competing flows. So if flows try to compete for available bandwidth, we want them to share it fairly. Um, and not have one flow starve the others. In short, we can say that congestion control is crucial for the efficient operation of modern networks. Uh, but how exactly does congestion control work? Uh, well, the general scheme is a slow additive increase that probes for additional bandwidth. Then the idea that packet loss indicates congestion. Um, and at that point, a multiplicative decrease that slows down to help clear out that congestion. Um, another point that's important to realize about congestion control is that there's a long history of powerful attacks uh, against it, stemming all the way back to uh, 1995 or so. Uh, these attacks have a number of very powerful results, including uh, decreased throughput, um, increased throughput so much that it starves all of the uh, competing flows, or a stalled data transfer where no useful data can actually be transferred in the connection. Uh, this should leave us asking, well, why are there so many attacks against uh, congestion control and why have they persisted so long? Um, and a large part of that, that is that these attacks leverage design behavior. Uh, remember, congestion control is designed to control throughput um, and these attacks are basically operating by confusing congestion control about the network conditions. So we're not talking about crashes, we're not talking about unusual control flow like we often see in uh, network services. Instead, we're talking about correct, legitimate behavior just occurring at uh, improper times because the uh, congestion control was confused. Um, additionally, there are many designs and implementations of congestion control with variations like Reno, New Reno, Cubic, SAC, Vegas, and BBR, among others, and additional optimizations that can be done like PRR, TLP, FRTO, and DSAC. Um, and then, of course, this is all in combination with the hundreds of implementations that we saw early, a, mem a moment ago. Um, this is kind of compounded by the fact that there's a lack of unified specifications here because all of these components and optimizations are specified separately, which makes this a partial list of the set of RFCs you need to read and understand 
uh, to handle modern TCP congestion control. This, of course, makes it incredibly difficult to understand the unified behavior of even a single implementation. Uh, additionally, congestion control has very dynamic behavior where the state changes often with every acknowledgment, but at the same time, the impact of any given packet dilutes very quickly. Okay, so what are the current testing methods that we use to find these attacks? Uh, well, of course, the big one is manual investigation, where security researchers manually investigate possible attacks against an implementation. But this simply doesn't scale, and it's incredibly labor intensive. Another option is regression testing, where we manually create tests for unknown attacks and then apply them across a whole bunch of implementations. But that's not going to find you any new attacks. Uh, additionally, you could use a system like Max, published at SIGCOM a few years ago, that attempts to automatically find manipulation attacks by leveraging symbolic execution. Uh, but this kind of system uh, requires source code and in a particular language. And it requires you to manually annotate um, interesting, potentially vulnerable lines of code. Uh, another option is a system like Snake, uh, which is actually my prior work that won Best Paper Award at DSN a few years ago. Um, it tries to automatically fuzz transport protocols to search for availability and performance attacks. Um, and it uses a state-based attack injection method for scalability. But unfortunately, it doesn't scale to the highly dynamic systems that congestion control has and the uh, multi-stage attacks that we see against congestion control. So uh, come on. Therefore, um, we developed a new system, TCPone, uh, with the goal of automatically testing TCP implementations for attacks on congestion control. Now, the key point here is we want to test real unmodified implementations of these protocols. Um, we don't want to have to instrument them or, or um, modify them in some way, which makes scalability the major challenge here because these attacks end up being complex and multi-stage, and as we saw a moment ago, congestion control is very dynamic. Um, so kind of brute force approaches or brute force with pruning like Snake did simply don't scale. Uh, instead, we model congestion control as a state machine and then use model-based testing to identify all possible attacks in a scalable manner. Uh, we then take those possible attacks and create testable attacks that use packet manipulation and injection and search for attacks causing decreased throughput, increased throughput, or a connection stall. <coughs> To understand uh, these attacks and just understand how they interplay with the uh, congestion control state machine, we're going to look at an example here. Uh, this is the optimistic ACK attack. Uh, it's a well-known attack against TCP congestion control uh, that our system actually did find against a number of different implementations. Uh, now, on the right of the side slide, we have the uh, TCP congestion control state machine. Um, and we're going to look at how that interacts with this attack. Uh, in particular, uh, this, the goal of this attack is to um, increase the sending rate of a target connection to star competing flows. And it does that by acknowledging data that hasn't been received yet. And when you do that, you cause one of the green transitions here to be taken. Which one depends on the current state of congestion control, but it's one of those. Um, and when you do that, you increase the C wind variable by a little bit. And the C wind variable is directly tied to throughput. Um, <clears throat> Therefore, if you do that repeatedly, um, you increase uh, the sending rate, which is the goal of the attacker. Now, when you do that, you also avoid all of these red transitions in the state machine, which reduce C wind and therefore reduce throughput. And it turns out that this pattern is general across congestion control attacks, uh, such that we can uh, generalize and say that these attacks um, attempt to cause some desirable transition in the congestion control state machine that uh, adjusts throughput for the attacker's goal. And these attacks need to be repeat, to repeatedly execute that transition to have noticeable impact. Now, interestingly, with a state machine this small, the way you repeatedly execute a transition is with some cycle in this state machine. Uh, and this takes us to our model-based attack generation, uh, where our goal is to generate all cycles in this congestion control state machine, where there's an increase or decrease in C wind, and therefore throughput along that cycle and where the attacker can use a set of actions to cause TCP to follow that cycle. Now, the way we do this is we consider the uh, state machine model of congestion control, like we saw in the previous slide. Uh, we then identify all cycles containing desirable transitions, which we call abstract strategy generation. <clears throat> um, and then we create a set of um, actions that we can use to try to force TCP 
to follow each of these cycles, which we call concrete strategy generation. Um, we're gonna look at each of those phases here in turn. Uh, first, abstract strategy generation. So the idea here is to enumerate all paths in our state machine, uh, then check for cycles, find the paths that are cycles, and then um, take those cycles that contain some desirable transition, which in our case is any change to CWIND that is any change to throughput. And these become our abstract strategies. Now there's a challenge in doing this because finding all paths in a graph isn't a standard graph algorithm. So we adapt depth for search to this problem with the basic idea being to um, mark a node unvisited once we visit the subtree rooted at that node such that we can visit it in some other path. Um, if we take this graph at the right of this slide here and start from node one, the way this algorithm works is it traverses down uh, the tree until can't go, depth first search can't go any further. We found a cycle. If the fortified transition we assume is desirable, we've got our first abstract strategy. Depth first search then comes back up until it can take some other path, which it can from node one, goes all the way down. We have a cycle, we have the same desirable transition, so a second abstract strategy. We come back up and we don't have anywhere else to go, so we're done. Um, that's the way the algorithm works. Now the other important thing to realize here is that abstract strategies are merely desirable cycles. We may not be able to realize them in practice. <clears throat> and this is where concrete strategy generation comes in. Uh, remember the idea is we wanna actually test implementations. Um, and we wanna do that without modifying or instrumenting them. Which means we're really limited to uh, packet manipulation and injection uh, in attempting to cause these strategies. So what we do is we um, consider each of the abstract strategies we generated from the prior step, um, and then we map each transition in, that, in each strategy to a set of basic actions. Things like um, injecting acknowledgments, duplicating acknowledgments, uh, limiting acknowledgments, um, in order to try to cause this transition. Um, and these are based on the capabilities of the attacker. Uh, we consider two types of attackers here. An on-path attacker who can, um, who can um, modify the packets on the network, and an off-path attacker who um, can observe the target connection and inject packets, but is unable to actually modify packets. Okay, um, so then when we went, set out to design our system, TCPON, uh, we took that model-based attack generation and uh, concrete and uh, abstract strategy generators that we just talked about, and we used those to generate our test strategies. <coughs> Our testing is then done with virtual machines that when the real implementations of TCP were testing um, in a dumbbell testbed network. And we have an attack injector that applies the um, actions, those malicious actions from our concrete strategies to the test network. And then we identify attacks based on the performance of our target TCP connection. Uh, now we actually evaluated TCPON against uh, five implementations of TCP from uh, Linux 4.8, Linux 3.13, Linux 3.0, Linux 2.0, and Windows 8.1. Um, and you'll see that we used a, that those implementations have a variety of congestion control algorithms. Uh, from kind of classic new Reno to compound TCP with SAC, uh, to modern Linux's cubic plus SAC plus a whole long list of optimizations. Uh, and ultimately we found 11 classes of attacks in these implementations, eight of which were previously unknown. Uh, the full set of results is here. Um, if you're interested, I encourage you to check out the paper, but you can just notice real briefly that we found both existing attacks, like the optimistic ACK attack that we saw a moment ago, as well as a number of new attacks, and that we found attacks against all the implementations uh, that we tested. So in summary then, we can say that we've developed a new model-guided uh, technique to search for possible attacks on congestion control. Uh, this technique uses the congestion control state machine to generate abstract strategies, which we can then convert to concrete strategies made up of these message-based actions. Uh, we implement this technique with a system called TCPone, which is able to find attacks on real implementations of congestion control. Uh, of the, uh, we tested five implementations of TCP, finding 11 classes of attacks, eight of which were previously unknown. Uh, we've also open sourced this system. You can check it out online at my GitHub at that URL there. And with that, thank you very much, and I'd be happy to take any questions now. <laughs> Hi, great talk. 
Thank so you. I have a question. It looks like the, from a threat profile, the, your attack is basically the same as like a DOS attack. Can you tell me how more efficient, how much more efficient this attack is than a DOS attack as far as like <coughs> bandwidth or patterns? Um, so we find a, a number of uh, different types of attacks, um, some of which can be used for denial of service. In fact, the big benefit of the um, attacks that increase the sender's rate are that they basically turn TCP into UDP, which makes them perfect for a denial of service type attack. Uh, so suddenly you can use things like core melt with TCP instead of UDP traffic. But do you have an idea of like, like just the percentage of traffic that you'd have to generate to cause the same disruption with this attack as opposed to just a standard DOS attack? Um, so uh, it's, it's very, very small. You can use like a 40 kilobit, kilobyte stream of acknowledgments um, to at least saturate the 100, meg 100 megabit links we were using in these experiments. That's the ampli amplification factor is very large. Hi, really nice paper, I liked it. Um, ben Zhao from uh, University of Chicago. Um, so, quick question, mm -hmm. natural extension. Um, what about things that interact with router, uh, sort of ECN and, and uh, more congestion control help from the router, those kind of protocols? Do this, does this apply or are you making simplistic assumptions about what the switches do in the middle? Um, so, you could certainly apply, th apply this to, to ECN. Uh, we haven't looked at um, applying it to more um, active queue management type schemes like that. Um, but I think there's, there's certainly some, some value in doing that. Um, ultimately, those re reactions are going to be very similar to what we, what we already found in the sense that ECN and those other schemes um, really just add additional ways to indicate congestion. So it's um, additional actions that you can use to cause the same transitions in these state machines. Yeah. Uh, so I was curious, uh, have you seen any attacks that make use of any of these known or recently discovered attacks in the wild world? Um, I'm not aware of a lot of attacks um, using TCP congestion control in the wild today. Um, I think right now, uh, for a lot of denial of service, just pointing a whole bunch of connections at something and is sufficient at the moment. But certainly, um, you look at the, the code for like Miri or some of these other uh, botnets, and um, they're already doing raw packet manipulation. To go the next step further to try something like this would be a minor extension of the code they already have. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them doing that soon. Um, also, um, if someone were to try something like the core melt attack to take out large, to disconnect large chunks of the internet, you know, probably a nation state actor rather than um, something, rather than the, you know, uh, kind of organized crime we see today, this would, these kind of attacks would be my number one choice. All right, well, let's thank our speaker. <clears throat>